Hi, my name is Don Cetus, and I'm the president of Action Result Services. I do small business sales and marketing consultants. I work with small business owners, independent salespeople, uh, you know, help them with their marketing, help them with sales, sometimes operations. Basically, I, my goal is to just help businesses grow through lead generation and other activities. Um, what I want to do today, though, is I want to talk about a partnership that I have with a company called Applied Management Group, Michael and Kelsey Thompson. Applied Management Group is up in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. Um, they've done a great deal of work over time in terms of training and development. Uh, they do a lot of financial software work. They do a great job of helping businesses understand what their costs are. Many businesses don't understand that, you know, if I send a truck out and I charge $70, half the time they don't realize they might be sending $90 every time they do that. Michael and Kelsey do a great job of helping companies in that area. What we have done is gotten together and created a program called the Growth Excellence Program. And what we've created 20 modules that we're recording and we're going to have available for people to have access to from a training perspective. Um, and we're starting to do some live events that are a part of these, uh, uh, several of these modules, and we're packaging them together where they make sense and offering them to the public. Um, I want to mention the, the disciplines that we call it. There's four disciplines that these training programs fall into. One of them is the organizational discipline, for example, how to create a mission and vision and value. Um, there's fast inter train, uh, excuse me, inter interview training, uh, some marketing conversion equation, and how do you do? Uh, you, how do you create compelling messaging is in that discipline. Then the sales uh, management, the sales process uh, is another discipline. And there's things like the six step sales process, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, personality and sales and some other skills development training as it relates to sales. There's the management and leadership development, uh, excuse me, discipline. There's leading and managing change, effective communications. I do a module on emotional intelligence and there's some team effectiveness as well. And the fourth discipline is the financial discipline. Um, this is where a lot of Michael and, uh, excuse me, Kelsey do it, but burden labor costing and, and just company financials, flat rate pricing and how to do pricing. So it just gives you a little flavor for the 20 modules inside the four disciplines of the Growth Excellence Program. Uh, if you ever want to learn more about that, just go to Google and search AMG for Applied Management Group, AMG Growth Excellence Program, and you can find more information, including a schedule of the trainings we have uh, scheduled at any time as we go forward. And I wanted to talk about a couple of those that are coming up. Uh, the first one is called Anatomy of Sales and the Art of Effective Questions. We're actually doing one uh, coming up uh, on Tuesday, April 2nd in Libertyville. We're also doing it in uh, McHenry on the 16th, but you can check the schedule at uh, if you search AMG Growth Excellence Program. The, the Anatomy of Sales, I lead a training called the Six Step Sales Process. Um, a lot of organizations, many, don't have, whether it's an individual person or a larger sales team, don't have what you would consider a documented process that is repeatable uh, It's and it's trainable. I mean, if you have 10 people doing sales, you might have it being done 10 different ways, and that's just not an effective way to maximize the potential of your sales force. And it also makes it very difficult if you bring on new people and you train them. A lot of times what people do is they, oh, let's, let's send you out to Shadow Joe for the next two weeks. Well, what you might be doing is training, you know, tr Joe's just training the bad habits Joe has and training your new people to have those same bad habits. So it's really about defining a process, getting it documented, and obviously over time you tweak it and improve it. But the idea is to have that process in place so that you can develop your sales force in a consistent, branded way. Because when you think about it, those 10 salespeople out there are representing you and they're representing your brand. So it's important to have that repeatable, trainable, and trackable process uh, to help you increase sales. Another aspect of the six steps, and there's obviously six of them plus a bonus, um, but we talk a little bit about overcoming objections. I'll tell you, it's just called LAMA. Listen, acknowledge, make a statement, and ask a question. The reason I go into that 
is if you go and ask salespeople, tell me how you overcome objections. Nine times out of 10, they won't describe for you the process of how they do it. They'll just kind of give you an example of somebody gives them an objection of what they do, but they have no way of articulating to you how they actually go about it. What is the What are the steps? What is the trained process they use to help overcome objections? Uh, and so that would be something that you would learn in the anatomy of sales and the art of, of, of asking effective questions. Then Michael, uh, the president of, uh, of Applied Management Group, does a course class called Sales Discovery Questions. It's very interesting. He focuses on asking the right questions. And Michael talks about the fact that many times when we're qualifying um, a prospect, which is one of the six steps, um, you're obviously asking questions to gather information. And he argues that many times we just ask intuitive questions. There's not intentionality behind them. We're not even sure what the right answers are, if there is a right answer. But really what we want to do is ask intentional questions that draw out the information that we're going to need to do the presenting uh, step of the six-step six sales process. So he talks very much about them being very intentional, well-defined. And it does go to the fact that, again, you want to develop a process that is repeatable and trainable. And the questions that you ask ask of your prospects to gather information should be relatively consistent and defined and understood and again very very intentional and it really does throughout this whole both of this both of these modules I would say that there's a, a great deal of helping you understand how do you develop empathy and understanding with your prospects we've heard the cliches you know we have two ears and one mouth so we should listen accordingly but it really is true and it, it is about building that trust and one of the best ways to develop trust is through empathy and if you understand what your prospect is looking for it's very very good very very positive a couple other things that i just want to mention about the six step sales process is the first step is preparation and it's one that often is gets slighted um, you know, I would suggest most sales opportunities are lost because people were not prepared, whether that's understanding who your audience is, understand who your client is, and understanding what kind of questions you should be asking before you get in to see uh, that prospect. And then also the qualifying. You know, again, we have to listen to what our prospects are saying when we ask those in very intentional questions, because uh, if we're waiting to, you know, speak next and not listening, we're going to miss information that would be very very helpful to us when we go to present I, I often joke that we use you know the prospects own words against them when we present but I don't mean that in a negative way but that's what you're doing you're coming back to them with what they said their needs are and now you're meeting that need uh, it's so important to really understand how do you qualify and how do you listen I mentioned llama earlier and then obviously we probably all can guess one of the last steps is closing I'm a big believer in the fact that your close should should be almost a natural outcome of that of that meeting if you're doing a great job of following the six steps. So that's some of the things that you would learn if you came to Anatomy of Sales and the Art of Effective Questioning. Another one I wanted to talk about, and this one's near and dear to my heart, and we're, we're calling it Hire Them Right and Develop Them Right. Um, and it, it is what it sounds like, is how do you hire the right people? Um, myself, or excuse me, David Skurlock, who is a senior training advisor, and Michael Thompson both teach the course called Fit Interview and Fast Interview Interviewing. Um, and what they're going to talk about is how do you select people and how do you speed up their onboarding process? Lots and lots of theories out there about what's the right way, behavioral interviewing, things of that nature, situational interviewing. Uh, but they'll go take you through a process that really is aimed at hiring the right people at the right time. And we all know that's a challenging process because we're human beings and human beings are all different. And they, no shocking, they don't always tell the truth in an interview. Uh, but this this training, it will be very helpful and help you in, in getting you the ability to hire the right people at the right time. Then I get to go into one of my favorite subjects is development, performance management. And I call my training called moving the dots. Um, moving the dots is all about managing the whole salesperson. And what do I mean by that? When you think about, uh, if I just ask you to think of a great employee that you've worked with or a great boss that you've had, which I've asked that question of over 500 people probably throughout my career. And then you ask them to describe that person once they have them in their head. 
you will find, and if you're doing it in your own head right now, you're going to be using words like they were dependable, they were supportive. If it was a boss, if they're not a micromanager, but they were there when I needed them. Um, they're a team player. They're supportive. They're assertive. Uh, they're trustworthy. Uh, they're honest. There's all these words that people use to describe greatness or behaviors. And the reason I talk a lot about this is because people, managers don't talk a lot about these things. It's find it interesting that when you ask someone to describe greatness, almost every word they will use is a behavior. Yet many times when we're working to develop other people, we focus so much on the performance side. How many calls did you make? How many appointments did you make? Um, those are critical elements that have to be measured. And if you don't have the skills to perform the basic function, in this case of a sales job, then obviously you can't do it. I use the example, if, if I went to work for an auto mechanic, I could be very high behavior. I could be the trustworthy and honest and all of those things, but my, I don't have the basic skills to do the job of a mechanic. So I would be a low performance, high behavior employee, which doesn't work. But if you have the basic skills and you know how to do sales, then the difference between good salespeople and great salespeople are those behaviors. And why do I know this? Because everybody says it, and I've seen it happen in organizations many, many, many times. So the focus of the moving the dots presentation is how do you do that? What is the process and the methodology beyond, beyond behind how do you manage both performance and behaviors? And what I talk about is developing upper right teams, high performance, high behaviors. One of the things I've seen throughout my career as I've managed sales teams in the past is if you increase the behaviors of your sales team, it is almost impossible for your performance not to go up because they do go hand in hand. And it goes back to, again, when you describe someone that's great, you will use those behaviors. So why not help yourself if you're a one person sales team and or help your team and the others that work around you on improving the behaviors that lead to greatness. Um, so I, it's, it's one of my favorite modules. I love to talk about this. I could talk about this till I'm blue in the face because it's so important. And, and I think it's one of those things so few managers do. Uh, if, if you can excel at helping others behave in a way that makes them great and, and also do it for yourself. It'll have a huge impact on your on your business. Again, I'll leave you that question. Just think about that again several times. What is it that makes people great? And do I help others develop those skills and or do I work on them for myself?